timeless story of Mowgli, a boy left in the wild. I sing the Bear Necessities oh, song classic. from the Jungle Book every night when I put my daughter to bed. We have to reenact the whole song, and every couple of days, like, like she's the producer of the show, she makes me watch the video. Yep. And she'd be like, he weighs right there, da da, because I have to be the bear. Yep. And um, so when he says, then don't spend your time looking around for something you want that can't be found. And don't spend your time looking around for something you want that can't be found. In between, when you're looking around, he looks over to the panther and he waves to him. So I, I have to wave to them. If I don't wave to the panther, the production stops. And then we have to go back to one. She's a director. Your daughter's yes. going to be a director. Yes, and it can, it can be, you know, when I'm off my game, it could be like a 40-minute, like a bad day on set. Like, oh, God, why did I ever want to be an actor? There's so much a bit in here of your daughter just going, cut, dad, dad, please. This is why we have rehearsal. What are you doing? You know you're supposed yeah. to cut. We don't have all day. We're losing light over here. Jesus, come on. Bare necessities. Uh, forget about your words. Bare necessities. That, that's, that's old mother's... Nature's recipe. I mean, the bare necessities or Mother Nature's recipe. I think it's that he says that's Mother Nature's recipe. She always goes, old, old Mother Nature's recipe. Bare necessities or Mother Nature's recipe. Dude, I have to do like the dance where he does the clap, back up, do the whole thing. <laughs> he wanted me where he goes, uh, when you look under the rocks and plants and take a glance at the fancy ants and maybe try a few. Yep. When you look under the rocks and plants and take a glance at the fancy ants. He then licks the ground. She wanted, she's like, Dada, you're supposed to lick the floor. It's like, I'm not licking the floor. <clears throat> Eventually. So then I had to gonna... pretend with my hand like that. No. Nah. So you're she could up then do her ants. next line, you eat ants, Baloo? You better believe it. You eat ants? <laughs> you better believe it. It's. <laughs> yeah, you're going to end up eating ants. She's going to give you a stick with ants on it, and you're going to have, it's going to It's going to be, she's going to strive for the realism. Of, yeah. That's my favorite Disney movie, by the way, The Jungle Book. That is my favorite animated Disney film. It's just such a simple, beautiful story. The artwork is gorgeous. It's all the characterizations. You also, know, the like, voiceover actors back in the day, like, I, I kind of like back in the day that they didn't let, Famous people do it because all you're going to do is picture them in the booth. Scene 42, take one. <laughs> Nalamini, you got the tell Tarzan that the vultures poisoned the coconuts. Yeah, yeah, screw the tell Tarzan. The <laughs> Which turned out it wasn't the truth. But um, just, just to get a voiceover actor where all they do is voiceovers. Like, I yeah. forget the name of the guy that does the voice of, like, the bear in that movie, but just the sound of his voice is just so amazing. And then his singing voice is incredible. So she's singing these songs I haven't heard in, like, 40 years. The Deep in the Hundred Acre Woods, where Christopher Robin plays. Deep in the Hundred Acre Wood, where Christopher Robin plays. A donkey named Eeyore is his friend. I'm like, oh, my God. Now, see, that I'm, I'm actually also really excited about. You know, when I was younger, I, I never thought like, oh, I don't know. I mean, kids, maybe. I don't know if, you know, if, if it happens, it happens. And now I've actually, now that we've been really talking about it, I've been having dreams lately where I have a kid and it's like the best thing ever where we're just hanging yeah, out. You're ready. Talking about stuff, watching cartoons. Yeah. Oh, come over here. Sit over here. Let's watch, you know, it's showing them all my favorite you know, cartoons and watching them discover that stuff. You know, God forbid if we're ever allowed to go to Disneyland again, like taking a kid to Disneyland for the first time is going to be where they're able to really process it. It's going to yeah. be fucking mind blowing. Yeah. It's going to be a, uh, it'll be a great thing. They have, uh, they have like all these Disney toys and stuff. And I know they're selling a brand, but who cares? The brand made me happy when I was a kid. So I, you know, she's totally, you know, into Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse. Right now she's into like the Jungle Book and Winnie the Pooh. And uh, it just sort of changes. We watched the Scooby-Doo movie. She loved that for a while. And uh, it just keeps like changing. Like she likes the Little Mermaid. There was a great one that Ed Asner, one of my favorite actors of all time, 
did a voice on uh, in the late 2000s about this, this old guy that had a house in the middle of the city and they were building up all around him and he wouldn't sell it. And somehow he attaches balloons to it. That's up. That's Pixar. Oh, I love that movie. I, I have, I have seen up. I've not seen it in a long time because I'm, I'm, I get very emotional at sad things. And the first, and and every fucking Pixar movie, I was going, you're not going to fucking get me again, Pixar. The first (laughs) five minutes of up, I was like it. In, I was inconsolable. Oh my God, I forgot that. I was mad at the movie. It, it's like, like, why, why it, did they put me through that? It's, it was it's such like, an adult, an adult. Oh my God. I, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it for people, but Jesus, the, the two things that they hit upon. Well, listen, if someone hasn't seen Up by this point, that's, the spoiler is kind of on them. All right, hit pause, because I'm going to say it in three, two, one. Dude, the fact that she, she couldn't have kids. Oh, and then she dies. And, and, and then so she like, dies. Oh, it kills me. And then, you know, Michael Giacchino, who is just the, a brilliant composer, does, I actually got the sheet music for it because I want to learn it on piano, but this just beautiful, like, waltzy piece that walks you through their lives and they totally suck you in and you don't know you're about to get kicked in the stomach because you're just watching, oh, these two kids discover each other and they're both kind of quirky and then they grow up and they fall in love and they have this life together and then they can't have kids but they still have this wonderful life together and then and then they're in the hospital and she's dying and you're like, what the fucking fuck? You know, and then you're just like, tears are just streaming down your face. I had to pause the movie. I was like, Lydia, I can't. I need a day. I need a day, and then we can finish watching the movie tomorrow. It fucking wrecked I did me. the opposite. I just started yelling at the TV, just going like, the fuck are we doing here? This is a cartoon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Am I watching a benefit? Am I at, at like, are, are we eulogizing somebody? It's just like. That's, but that's Pixar. That's the Pixar way is that they sneak attack you with, you know, where it's just like, Fun, fun, fun. Fucking, you know, uh, brass knuckle to the heart. What do I do now, Ellie? And I have to tell you something. Like, they nailed it, too. Because when people die, that's the way it is. Yeah. The unfortunate thing that you learn when you get older is that, you know, people just, just, they're there and then they're not. One week later. I watched a movie the other night with my kid about this old guy. um, And his wife dies. You know, it's Disney. Somebody always has to die, right? (laughs) Is it up? Uh, Yes. Yeah. It's a sad movie. It's it's like, what what are they trying to do to you? Like the fucking, you know, he finds love. He finds his way. And then just the the cutest couple ever. And then all of a sudden they show her that they're painting like, stuff on the wall like they're gonna have a kid and then they just show her at the doctor crying and i'm like <laughs> did she have a miscarriage is this like is this is a storyline in a fucking disney movie a miscarriage i gotta explain this my daughter's like going she's sad and then i had to have my nia had to explain to me what happened i go did she have a miscarriage like no no they just said she's barren she can't have any kids <laughs> how come they don't have that ride at disney yeah. they don't have that one they don't have <laughs> They don't have Remember the Titans. That was a that was a Disney movie. They need to make those rides, and I'll go. Uh, yeah. Oh. So yes, yeah, so we watched that thing, and uh, yeah, it got pretty intense, man. And all of a sudden, that guy just he started to try to kill him, and there was the uh, the Asian kid there who was sort of a kidnapping that he should, maybe should have turned the house around, but he kind of kept going. Wow. You should try this, Mr. Fredrickson. Look, there's a bus that could take me home two blocks away. Hey, I can see your house from here. Don't check around so much, kid. Ah! Well, that's not gonna work. I'm with this, <laughs> that little Cub Scout kid. It was, I was, it was still a good movie, but there was a lot yeah. of themes in there that I thought were a little beyond <laughs> my three and a half year old. Because <laughs> she kept going, "Is that his daddy? Is that his daddy?" I can't know. No, no it's that? just some old, old guy. guy. Tied balloons to his house and I uh, took the kid to South America. 
<laughs> and not only that, he's up in the clouds. He gets into fucking IFR. That's my favorite thing ever, right? He has no gauges or anything, but it's also like he's not really staring it, so he's going to be fine. Is this how you steer your house? Uh, Does it really work? Yeah. Oh, this makes it go right and that way left. But then the fucking kid is out on the front porch for like half the ride. Yeah. And I got to be honest with you, I'm not trying to be the fucking weekend uh, warrior here, but he would have got hypoxia. He would have died. He can't fucking go up there that without, uh, I forget the test. I think it's above 12.5. You got to have some sort of assisted oxygen. This little kid was fucking out on the porch. <laughs> yeah, he got down to like Nicaragua before he realized the fucking kid was hanging out there. <laughs> I know it's just a movie, but Jesus Christ. And he's going uh, like, those are cumulonimbus. And in my head, I'm going, oh, you want to get away from that? That's like the worst shit ever on the test. Uh, Never bring down a fucking DC-10. Um. <laughs> I know that clout is a cumulonimbus. Did you know that the cumulonimbus forms when warm air... Stay there, all right, right blow up the room. That's how we get lightning. That's nice, kid. <laughs>